Overpaying tax with your Australian superannuation fund. Hi there, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat finance planner based here in Singapore. And today I want to share with you a story about a recent client of ours who we recently onboarded as a new client. It's an Australian expat couple right here in Singapore that for years and years were making, for some, a glaringly obvious mistake, but for them, something that was so easy to overlook and something that we see time and time again. So let's dive in, let's have a look at the situation, what the actual advice given was and the position that they're now in as a result of going through that process. Now we'll call this couple Sarah and Jim. Now Sarah and Jim, Australian expat couple, both working here in Singapore, both Australian citizens. They have Australian superannuation back home. They have a share portfolio here in Singapore and some cash in the bank. That's it. They're both non-tax residents of Australia they're both tax residents of Singapore, and they've been living and working in Singapore for the last six years. So for six years, they've been saving, setting money aside, really trying to get ahead financially and make the most of this low tax environment right here in Singapore. So all sounds pretty good to start, but what they were both doing is contributing to their superannuation fund back in Australia, which in itself is not the issue. But what they were doing, because they were told by a friend of ours, a friend of theirs that it was a good idea to do so, was making concessional super contributions and paying 15% concessional tax on that contribution for the last six years. Now, to put that in dollar terms, they were each contributing $20,000 per year for the last six years and paying 15% tax that didn't need to be paid. That's $3,000 each per year over the last six years. So $6,000 every year by six years, $36,000 that we effectively lost that we didn't need to lose. Now, great that we built up the super. Hopefully it had performed well um, over those six years. It had done okay in this case, but we paid all this tax that we didn't need to be paying. So what could they have done instead? Well, sadly, once those contributions have been uh, treated as concessional once they've been taxed, not really a great deal that can be done in most in instances to actually get that tax back. But what they can now do going forward or what they could have done for the last six years is made those super contributions as non-concessional. There are two types of super contributions when it comes to putting money into our super fund. One is the concessional, which is the tax deductible, taxed at 15% on the way in. The other is non-concessional, which is not tax deductible, but there is no tax applied when that money goes in. So in this case, the couple could have been putting in $20,000 each, each year and not paid any tax on that money going in. So that $36,000 that had been paid could have been in fact $0 in tax over the last six years. Now, taking this a step further, as many will realize, Within our Australian superannuation fund, there is also tax that applies on capital gains and dividends. And that tax rate is 15%. It's 15% on dividends, 15% on capital gains, on any shares or assets that are held for less than 12 months. Now, if we hold those shares, those investments within our super fund for beyond 12 months, then that capital gains tax rate can drop from 15% to 10% but it's still higher than the 0% we could be paying by investing outside of super. We could be investing in our own name in Singapore, which is what we'd help this couple set up here in Singapore, and that tax rate is zero. We're now running a diversified portfolio of index funds, exchange traded funds, and they're not paying any tax on that money because of their non-resident tax status down in Australia. They could also put that money into an insurance bond, into a trust, into a company structure, and often pay less tax than they're otherwise paying in uh, inside their superannuation fund. So this is not to say that we should be avoiding contributing to super. This is to say we need to be very mindful of how we're contributing, that we're not paying any more tax than we otherwise need to be, as was the case sadly with this couple. But thankfully, they're now on the right track. 
they're not paying any more tax than they need to be paying. We're still contributing a bit to that superannuation fund uh, because from a behavioral basis, that makes a lot of sense for them. They like to have that money ticking away in the background, but it's now a non-concessional contribution and we're not wasting that money on that concessional tax. So as always, run your own numbers, work out what's right for you, but make sure we're not paying any more tax than we absolutely need to be paying, particularly when it comes to our super contribution. Thank you for tuning in. Drop me a note with any questions you've got at all. Thank you uh, for following and do remember to subscribe to the channel.